Hi, I'm Nigel Petrie from Victoria, engineered to slide, and this is my 180SX. Putting together a feature about Nigel Petrie and any of his cars is a hard thing to do. Where do you start? With his drifting history or skills behind the wheel, or his fabrication skills and the range of drift parts he's fabricated? Maybe the style of his 180SX drift car and S13 road car, or his mental Hilux tube frame drift ute? What about his engineered to slide website dedicated to his build-ups and life of drifting? Or the fact that he's the Victorian ambassador for the Australian Drifting Grand Prix? Stuff it, we'll let him talk. In high school, lived in a little country town, started reading Hot Fours and um, they had a little article on Denso in his purple FC. Thought have to call in to JMS, um, called in, bought some DVDs from Japan, got home and I was just like, wow. It was action from Sakia Hills and the cars were just all low and 18 years old and just hooked from day one. Yeah, bought a 180SX, continued to um, just wreck it, weld the diff, cut the coilovers, just, yeah, just made it low, made it look cool. And then um, I just really got serious into finding out what works, what doesn't work. Tried to work out what's the easiest way to make this car work for me. This um, Sylvia shell came up for sale and it already had all the aero that I wanted on it. Just had so many good ideas from the things that I'd stuffed up on the 180 and just put it together and it just turned out exactly how I wanted it. Like I'd compete in that car, but I'd still gone too far with it. Like the floor mount, uh, tilt and pedal box. It, it's great, like or everything looks great, but it just doesn't work properly for drifting. And you need a car that you can just go out and just not care too much about. So I sort of said, all right, you know, this car's how I want it, just put it away. And, um, and have a look around for something else. So I wanted to look for something that was modified in a way that I could improve on and just use the car quickly. I ended up finding the car behind us. It had a lot of good parts and those parts hadn't had a whole lot of use on them. Everything was brand new, clutch was brand new, turbo was brand new. Uh, just needed a spray job and, and a clean up. Got Vuit DT panels to spray it up and then just refined everything, basically pulled it apart, redid all the suspension, like everything was there, the arms were there, it just needed to be built properly. And um, and yeah, and then three years later, it, it rocks up like this, and it's again, too clean to drive, but hey, just thrash the hell out of it and fix it. A big part of the appeal of Nigel's cars are their style, and the 180SX has plenty of it, with a genuine URAS body kit, wide fenders, vented FRP bonnet and type X wing all re-sprayed in red and dropped hard on Driftmaster wheels, but he generally runs TE37s on the track. The recent addition is the signage from his new sponsors, Federal Tires, Wiltec, Motul, and well, us, Motive DVD. Nigel has also been appointed the Victorian ambassador for the Australian Drifting Grand Prix and will be attending every round in 2011. Doing everything yourself and just sort of planning everything and then getting help it just it just makes such a big difference We've got federal tires on with me this weekend and um yeah just brand new tires out there all the time it's going to be wicked motor oils came to the party as well wheel tech help out with um fitting tires which is a, a fair expense when you're sort of swapping and changing during the course of the day i've been given the title of victorian ambassador for the um australian drift grand prix uh in an exciting new series coming up going to be run around Australia and just have a national series back in Australia just makes the possibilities for drifters that much better. Part of Nigel's car looking this good is how low it is. Ridiculously low. But unlike a Bogan's chop spring Commodore, this 180SX still handles and drives the way it should, thanks to Nigel's clever modifications to the suspension. I think drifting is a show. Um, I believe in a car looking good, but I also believe in a car that works properly. The rear subframe, I modified the rear knuckles um, and that worked great, no worries. But the issue I was having, the actual drive shaft boots would just tear because they're on such an angle. The car was a little bit unreliable, so I got home and pulled the rear subframe out, thought, how can I make this better? Got the angle grinder out and um, hacked the shit out of it. Jacked it up back in the car and I'm like, yeah, that's gonna work nice. 
but then I had to plate everything. So it's probably about 80 mil higher up in the body now. And the actual diff is sunken right up and the diff's hard up against the floor. All the chassis rails are notched for the subframe to sit inside. Um, all the pins are cut off, they're re-tapped. Yeah, it all just works really well now. I've said it before, and I think building a car is all about making it easy on yourself, making it easy to work on, making it easy to drive, making just make your life easier and you'll be in the game for longer. So I ended up just designing my own knuckle, um, designing my own rear knuckle as well, and, and yeah, it just, yeah, it just snowballs really. We'd love to show you more, but some things need to remain a trade secret. But you can read the longest suspension modification list we've ever seen, and you can see with your own eyes the raised rear strut tops and the teen super drift coilovers. Braking wise, the car has R33 Skyline brakes all round, and inside the car there is more styles for miles. The stripped interior is fitted out with Bride, Defi, and Nardi Wheel, all pure JDM goodness. Nigel's custom roll cage, stitch welding, handbrake and dash can all be seen too. It all looks good and is perfectly functional. need huge power. Um, I'd love it to have power but I just don't have the budget for that. Um, Dr Drift's extracted about 260 rear wheel kilowatts out of it and yeah it's going really well. It's reliable. That's how I want to keep it. Nigel's mentality is right. You don't need big power for drift. You need a reliable well set up car and this SR20 combo has proven very reliable. The stock bottom end is mated to the head with ARP studs and a metal head gasket and there is Greddy camshafts and rocker stoppers. Reliability is kept in check with a truss sump, Greddy oil cooler and a 50mm radiator all with custom ducting. The 250 odd kilowatts comes courtesy of a truss TDO6 L220G turbo with a precision wastegate and custom 3 inch exhaust system. The Hypertune inlet manifold and throttle body receives chilled air through the custom intercooler which Nigel made so the radiator would receive maximum cool air. Nigel fabricated everything in the engine bay himself, the only thing he didn't do was tune it, which was handled by Dr Drift pushing buttons on the PowerFC computer. Also aiding reliability is the Z32 gearbox which Nigel made the adapter kit for and there is an ORC twin plate clutch and Nismo two-way LSD. We caught up with Nigel at the Federal Tyres Drift Attack at Winton Raceway and got to see him in action. Nigel was as smooth and consistent as ever and took the number four qualifying spot. But he didn't have it easy in the battles. He had to go one more time against Rob Arbolino in the top eight. then went up against Leighton Fine in the top four. <laughs> Nigel was then able to take out Nathan Weasel, putting him on the podium in third place before he let loose for some victory skids. You know, 
though everything that's on that car has been done by my own two hands. Um, you've got gearbox conversions, you've got modified knuckles, you've got custom subframes. The roll cage I do, strut mounts, you know, just pulling something apart, cleaning it, putting it back together, re-machining it, cleaning it up. It's just, it's all fabrication. And pretty much, I don't think there is a job that could help you as much with a race car as fabrication does. I've got the car to a stage where it works, I get it out of the shed, I know what it's going to do. I really don't want to modify it, I just want to replace what breaks. Um, I'm going to change the look up a little bit um, and just, yeah, always make it look fresh, always make it look good, always have it mechanically ready to go. But yeah, I don't really need to modify it much more.